All right, everybody, how's it going? And welcome back to the channel. Welcome back to another United match preview. As United look to bounce back after their first defeat under Ole Gunnar Solskjaer in the Premier League against Arsenal last weekend. As United switch focus to the FA Cup as they travel down to Molyneux to face off against Nuno Espirito's Wolverhampton Wanderers side in the quarter finals. Also, we're going to be having a talk about the outcome of the Champions League draw that's just taken place briefly. And we'll also be discussing a couple of the players that could be featuring against Wolves on Saturday. So smash a like on the video, hit that subscribe button and let's crack on. So, like I said, before we actually get stuck in to having a look at this Saturday's game against Wolverhampton Wanderers, the Champions League draw's just taken place and we couldn't have asked for a worse draw, if I'm honest. It's United taking on... Lionel Messi and Barcelona. Terrible draw. The one side that I didn't really want United to draw and we ended up getting them. And if we do somehow make it to the final this year, nobody can say we've done it the easy way. We had a tricky group with Juventus and Valencia in the group stage. We faced PSG and come back from insurmountable odds. And now we're facing arguably the front runners for the Champions League in Barcelona with one of the one of the best players to ever grace a football pitch in Lionel Messi. So he's not the most ideal ideal draw in the world by any means. But it is Ole Gunnar Solskjaer returning to the new camp 20 years on. Is it written in the stars for Ole to produce yet another new camp miracle and somehow get us through against this incredible Barcelona side and if we do we actually have a potentially tasty semi-final against Jurgen Klopp's Liverpool side which actually would probably fancy us against this Liverpool side over two legs and if that's the case in the semi-finals we'd have a we'd have a reasonable chance if we were to somehow get past this Barcelona side to reach in the final in my opinion so whilst it's a tough draw if we somehow get through the chances are against us obviously but if we were so, to somehow do it I'd actually fancy us to get to the final if we can see off Barcelona. Let me know in the comment section what you think of the draw. And now switching focus back to the FA Cup and back to Wolves this coming weekend. And coming out of that game against Arsenal uh, last weekend, uh, we, there was a couple of issues, especially in the centre of the park, uh, with Nemanja Matic, who was playing his first game back after a couple of weeks out with a uh, with an injury. And it, and it showed, if I'm honest, it, it almost showed like we'd rushed him back a little bit. Which, it's it's a shame really because Matic, under Ole Gunnar Solskjaer, Matic looked ten times the player he did under Jose Mourinho. So for him to come back and not be at that level quite yet, which I think he, I'm pretty certain he will get to, and we could really need him for when we play Barcelona. Right now, I don't think he's at that level, and given the performances from the likes of Scott McTominay and Fred in Man uh, Nemanja Matic's absence through that injury, I think we've got to look at uh, uh, giving Matic a little bit of time off because that was one of my main criticisms under Jose that Matic was playing week in and week out even when his performances didn't warrant it. And arguably, you could say his performance against Arsenal doesn't warrant another start this weekend against Wolves, be that through injury or through form. I'd rather us go with Scott McTominay in central midfield, a fully fit, central midfielder because I think that the midfield area could be a key battle against this Wolves side because they are a technically gifted side. They do like to get on the ball. They're not like the majority of teams that come up from the championship where it's all hustle and bustle. They do like to get on the ball. They do like to distribute it from midfield. And there's a couple of key players of theirs in that central midfield area that I think we need to keep an eye on. And I'd prefer a little bit of mobility with the likes of Scott McTominay. And not only that, the, it almost looked like Matic was half a step behind everybody else. It didn't look like he was up to speed with it. So I'd rather um, Scott McTominay come in and give Matic another week's rest, and, or another couple of weeks rest with the international break coming up, and then let him come back for the remainder of the season. Uh, so that's what I would do in midfield. Obviously, there's an argument to bring in Fred in as well, or even potentially Ander Herrera if he's fully fit. But I think McTominay kind of warrants a little bit of a start, if I'm honest. And that's coming from someone who doesn't really rate Scott McTominay. I think his form has deserved another start. And I think this would be an ideal place for it against Wolves. Let me know in the comment section if you agree or disagree. And one of the few bright spots in that game against Arsenal was the little 10-15 minute cameo of Mason 
Greenwood, the 17-year-old revelation from the United Academy ranks. He's been banging goals in for every single age group, left and right this season, or last couple of two couple of seasons. And he came on against Arsenal in a game which we were really chasing. We really didn't have any. We didn't really have anything to. It was it was a high pressure situation because he was thrown on to try and get us back into the game um, because there was no other options. If I'm honest, off the bench and. I think I don't think he let himself down. I thought he was tidy with his play. I don't think he did anything wrong. He didn't do anything world-beating in that 15 minutes. But we know he's got the potential to do that. And on that stage against Arsenal, he didn't look out of place. For a 17-year-old to come on and make your Premier League debut and to look part of the furniture instantly, really, I think he needs to be shown a lot of a lot of a lot of um, a lot of appreciation for that because I don't think I think. It, too many times we see kids come in, especially 17-year-olds, and he's only just 17, to come in, and it's a bit daunting. It didn't look like that one bit for Mason Greenwood, and he just took it in his stride. And with the likes of Romelu Lukaku being out injured with a foot injury this weekend, and Marcus Rashford, I think, who need, who needs a little bit of a rest, I feel, since that since that terrible challenge from Jordan Henderson, that he's not really been the same since. I think he deserves a little bit of a rest, Rashford, and this weekend could be a ideal opportunity to throw Mason Greenwood in against Wolves from the very start. Do I see us doing that? Probably not. I could see us going with Marshall and Rashford. But I think that Greenwood, sooner or later, is gonna get that start. And I don't. I wouldn't be. I wouldn't be disappointed if we were to line up with Greenwood and Anthony Martial up front against Wolves on Saturday. Let me know in the comment section if you agree. But I think. He deserves a FA Cup debut. Just remains to be seen whether we actually get it or not come Saturday. And as far as our opponents tomorrow in Wolves, they've had a fantastic season on the Nuno Asperinto. I still can't remember his name. I've said that wrong about three times, but never mind. We'll gloss over it. They've had a fantastic season. Finished, they're up in seventh position already. For a, for a newly promoted side into the Premier League, that's a fantastic season. And they would have snatched your hand off if you'd have offered it that them at the start of the season. They're, they've only actually lost one game in the last 12. Yeah, there's a few draws in there, but there's still a fantastic achievement at this stage of the season for a newly promoted side. And they're off the back of a really hard-fought, good 1-1 draw away at Chelsea. It could have also been better for them with Chelsea rescuing a point later on. So they've shown that they can do it against the big sides. They've shown they can do it against us, frustrating us at Old Trafford coming away with a point earlier in the season. So we've got a little bit of payback that's due to Wolves from that game as well. They are a technically decent side, like I say, especially in the central midfield area. They've got a couple of good technicians there who really like to get on the ball and start to dictate play a little bit. They've also got a decent work ethic as well under the manager. And yeah, it's going to be an hard game on Saturday at Molyneux. But... There are a couple of players we've got to keep an eye on if we are to get a decent result against Wolves and progress into the semi-finals. And the first one is Ruben Neves, who's been fantastic for Wolves since he joined them a couple of seasons ago. A really good technician in the centre of the park for this Wolves side and somebody that United could potentially be looking at for their own midfield come this summer. Because I wouldn't be disappointed if we were to come in and get Ruben Neves into this United squad this close season. I think he's one of the best players outside of the top six in the Premier League. And he's a very good age, 22, 23 years of age. Only going to get better as well as he gets older. Got a really good passing range on him as well. So we're going to have to get tight on him to stop him spraying those balls about. Also, Diogo Yotta, who his work really goes underappreciated up front for Wolves. Obviously, Jimenez is the main target man. I mean, I, I don't really think he's that great, if I'm honest. But... Uh, but Diogo Yota is the engine that gets about him. He's the one that goes about all across that front line, really works the defenders, puts pressure on, on the uh, centre arse as well from the opposition and forces mistakes from the defence as well. So that's a player that we're going to have to look out for as well. And also, a bit out of left field, Matt Doherty, the Irish right back for Wolves, who has been in good form this season. And so good, in fact, that United, I think, again, should be looking at him as maybe an alternative to that right-back spot, which obviously needs a bit of attention from United in this summer. 
And I know we're supposed to be after Wan Bissaka, but Matt Doherty could also be on that list as well. He's got three goals and four assists this season. He's not been playing every game either, and he's got a really good consistent delivery on him from that right hand side so we're going to have to watch it for his balls into the box on Saturday against Wolves as well but as long as United play up to their standard we should be able to get past Wolves it's going to be a tough game whatever way you cut it it's going to be a, a tight game because Wolves are a decent decent side but I still fancy United to have enough to get past this Wolves side if we perform the levels that we have been doing in recent weeks even the game against Arsenal even though we lost we played well and we just didn't take our chances. So that's something we've got to improve on this week against Wolves. And hopefully we've got enough to see us through to the semi-final. And as far as the United side, I'd like to see us line up with against Wolves tomorrow. I've got David Dea in goal. I've got Diogo Dallo at right fullback because thank the Lord, Ashley Young is suspended. He is not going to be playing. There is no two ways about it. So it's a massive chance for Dallo to impose himself and nail down that right back spot, which is there for the taking, if I'm honest. I've got Small and Lindelof at centre half with Luke Shaw at left fullback. Then I've got McTominay in that holding midfield role. And then I've got a returning Ander Herrera, who I thought we really missed against Arsenal with his energy and his and his intensity from that midfield area. Hopefully he's fit enough to return. I know he's been in training this week, so whether he's fit enough to return, I'm not sure. Alongside Paul Pogba, obviously, in midfield with Jesse Lingard, the tip of the diamond with Rashford and Martial up front. Like I say, potentially you could even see Mason Greenwood in that front three, or you could even see it becoming a front three. I've got it as a as a diamond, a 4-4-2 diamond, because rumours are that's what Ole Gunnar Solskjaer is going to line up with tomorrow against Wolves, but it could very easily be switched to a 4-3-3 with those involved. So I think there's enough in there to get past this Wolves side. Like I say, it's not going to be an easy game by any means, because they are a good good side but United are in good form at the minute regardless of that loss against Arsenal and I still feel that United have enough to get past this Wolves side and as far as the scoreline like I say I think it's going to be a tight game it's going to be a, a, a difficult game Wolves are going to be really up for it late on on a Saturday evening the, the ground is going to be bouncing at Molyneux although I'm sure United will take a decent contingent down to Birmingham I've gone for a 2-1 United win like I say it's going to be tight but I think United might just shade it and move on into the semi-finals of the FA Cup. Let me know if you agree with that score prediction. Let me know if you disagree. Also, would you change anything about the starting lineup? Would you pump for Mason Greenwood right from the very start or would you go with Rashford and Martial up front like I have done? Let me know in the comment section. And as always, if you've enjoyed this, bang a like on the video, hit that subscribe button. I'll be back with my actions after the game against Wolves tomorrow evening. So keep it locked to the channel and I will catch you guys next time.